morning, good evening, good afternoon, whatever time of day it is that brings you here. Um, hello and welcome. Today is my last time um, sharing God's Word with you as your intern, Pastor. It has been such an amazing year. A year of growth, a year of learning, a year of loving this congregation and feeling the love from this congregation. Today is our second part of the Dear Church series, and I wanted to be able to say, Dear Church, thank you. Thank you so much for pouring into my life and my family's lives. A huge thank you to those who invited us over to their homes for dinner or lunch or took us out to dinner. Thank you for inviting us into great intimate conversations into your lives and praying for us, pouring into our lives and just really encouraging us and helping us in this journey. And I say us because it really is an entire family journey. I really love the Congregation Spirit Lutheran. You guys are just absolutely amazing. It's a fun place to do ministry. It's a great place to play, um, to experiment. And this congregation, you all have just been so kind to me and welcoming and including me in uh, your lives and in the life of Spirit. And you welcomed me into doing ministry alongside you. There was no question about it. You all just opened up your arms and said, let's do this thing together. And so I thank you so much for that opportunity. It's a beautiful blessing to be at the end of my internship and to feel um, sorrow and having to leave because it is so great to have been a part of this congregation, to be a part of all of your lives. You have made me a better human being and you have made me a better pastor. And I thank you so much from the bottom of my heart for that. In addition to saying, dear church, thank you, I also want to say to you, because these times are absolutely crazy, you know, kids are getting ready to go back to school, um, teachers are diving into subjects they've never taught before, we're dealing with racial tension, political divide, uncertainty, we're dealing with a continued threat of a pandemic, and it just feels like these list of things that cause anxiety just are not ending. In fact, I feel like sometimes it's adding. So in addition to saying, dear church, thank you, I wanna also say, dear church, do not be afraid. You hear me? Do not be afraid. Don't buy into that. And here's why. So I wanna read from you uh, from um, Ephesians today, but first before I do, I wanted to read Isaiah. So Isaiah keeps poking out to me over and over again as I'm saying my goodbyes and my loves and my thank yous to everyone at Spirit Lutheran Church. And Isaiah chapter 41, verse 10 is something that has been striking me for this last week. And it says this, and this is God speaking to us, okay? Dear Spirit, here it is. So do not fear for I, that's God, I am with you. Do not be dismayed for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. And I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. God, the creator of the cosmos, the creator of the stars, of the galaxies, will uphold you and will protect you. Do not be afraid, my siblings in Christ. Don't buy into this fear. Yes, be aware. Yes, be concerned. Yes, take cautions. But do not buy into this fear. Do not allow this fear to become your lowercase g, God. Do not allow this fear to be the thing that drives everything that you do. No, instead, turn to God. Turn to God and rely on God. And so I have kind of a, a lengthy piece of scripture, and here it is. And it reminds us, for this reason, Paul writing in the church in Ephesians, I kneel before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and earth derives its names. I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you, Spirit Lutheran Church, with power through his spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in fear, no, no, established in love, may have power together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide, how long and how deep and how high is the love of Christ. And to know this love that surpasses knowledge, 
that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. That's my hope for you, that you may be full to the measure of the fullness of God. And full with love. Full with love because, as Paul says, I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you have received. To be completely humble and gentle, be patient, bearing with one another in fear. No, no, no. In love. Make every effort to keep the unity of the spirit through the bond of peace. There is but one God, one spirit, just as you were called to one hope when you were called, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and father of all who is over all and through all and in all. So Christ himself gave apostles and prophets and evangelists and pastors and teachers to equip his people for the works of service. God gave us all gifts to equip right? So that, why? So that we could fear? No. <laughs> so that the body of Christ may be built up. You're called to be a people of God to build each other up and to do this until we reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son God, the Son of God, and become mature, attending to the whole measure and the fullness of Christ. And then at that point, my siblings in Christ, right? At that point, we will no longer be tossed to and fro like infants in a wave. No, we will then focus on God. So my siblings in Christ, my hope and my prayer for you is that you will not fear. Rather, you will rely on God in these crazy times. Maybe turn off the news and open your Bible. Maybe turn off sharing these crazy Facebook posts about fear and anxiety and rather share the hope that we have in Jesus Christ. So dear church, thank you. Thank you for the love that you have given me. Thank you for the opportunity to be able to do ministry alongside with you. And, and thank you for the honor of allowing me to embark into this journey with you all. And also, do not be afraid. For the Lord our God is with you always. Amen. Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. Lord, turn his face toward you and give you peace. The Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you.
His favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children may His favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children may His favor. 